Welcome to EE Know How. In this video, we will be learning what an inductor is, what its inductance is, and what is the reactance of an inductor, and also the voltage across an inductor. So, an inductor is an electronic component that is used to store energy temporarily in a magnetic field. And schematically, it is represented like this. So you have the two terminals, X and Y, of the inductor. And it actually looks like a piece of wire which is wound up into a coil shape. And it's really, uh, an inductor is really uh, the piece of wire which is wound as a coil. So if you look at it, you think it would be a short circuit, right? So because it's, it's just a piece of conducting material between X and Y, but you just made it into a coil, you made the windings. So what this does is, this windings, this will create a resistance to the flow of current between X and Y. And let's see what this, and we call that inductance. And we will see what this inductance, and inductance is used, uh, usually represented with the letter L. And this inductance is you, proportional to the number of turns n of the wire. And then, now assume, let, let's look at uh, two, two inductors. One has like a few turns here. And then the other one, it has the same length and the same area. It has more turns here. So, the inductor say you got A and B, so B would have a larger inductance. And now let's look at two inductors. This is one inductor, and the other one, it has the same number of turns, but it has a larger coil area. So if it has a larger coil area, so this is C and D. So the, in, in this case you said L of B is greater than L of A, the inductance of A. The same thing here. L of D, which has a larger cross-sectional area, L of D is greater than L of C. It has the same number of turns. Here the turns are different. So you said the inductance is uh, proportional to the number of turns n, and inductance is also proportional to the area of the coil, so area A, the cross-sectional area. Now, let's look at uh, a two other, one more scenario, two other inductors. Now, this inductor has a number of turns the length is this. There is another inductor which actually has the same number of turns but it spans a larger length. So the, uh, the here what we assume is so now these are inductors E and F and E and F have the same number of turns and the same cross-sectional area but the length of F is larger. So here in this case what happens is the inductance of E would be greater than the inductance of F. So which means that L is inversely proportional to the length L. So these are the three proportional proportionalities we see for the inductance. The inductance is directly proportional to number of turns. So it's directly proportional to the area, coil area it's inversely proportional to the length. So now we introduce the proportionality constant here and so what L would turn out to be is L is n square number of turns square of the number of turns mu A over L and this mu is the permeability of the material 
of the material that's in between the coils here. So it is permeability. So now what we see is usually inductors or there is a solid core usually like a soft iron core say and then a wire that has been insulated is wound around this core in so many turns and this is the inductance and these are the points X and Y so you have this core material and then we the mu is the permeability of this material mu and mu can be written as mu relative permeability multiplied by the permeability of vacuum which is mu naught and if you look at physics textbooks mu naught is 1.256 10 power minus 6 and the units here are Henry's per meter so the units of units of inductance is Henry's is Henry's is Henry and the units of inductance are the Henry's so this is how an inductor is formed. Really its inductor is really a piece of wire that is wound over top of a core. And what this does electrically, so we would like to see what, what it does electrically here, inductor. So now let's look at a, a circuit where you, you have a voltage source V assume it's a DC voltage source and you have a switch you have a resistor here and then say so assume these two points are shorted like this actually there's a short here between this and this so now when you close the switch when you close the switch the current flowing through this circuit we have seen that as I is equal to V over R that is the current that flows and it starts flowing immediately when you close the switch now let's introduce an inductor in series with the resistance between these two points so now once we introduce the inductor what happens when you close the switch is the current the current I of T will not start flowing immediately previously I of T I of any T is just I it's a constant starts flowing immediately after closing the switch here but now once you introduce this inductor in the path the current does not flow immediately the reason for this is this inductor actually obstructs certain changes in any current and then it will actually build up a voltage across it to obstruct any changes in current and that's how the inductor it stores energy in an electric field so now what happens is in this case the I of T when T is equal to zero at T is equal to zero will be zero and then it increases slowly so then what happens is the V of T VL of T the voltage across the inductor initially would be V only then you can have a zero current because you want zero voltage across the resistor so all the voltage will be dropped initially across the inductor and then the current starts flowing the voltage across the inductors reduces and eventually inductor becomes a short inductor is a short but as long as there is a current flowing through the inductor even if it is a DC current 
inductor stores energy in a magnetic field. Stores energy in a magnetic field. So that is how the inductor works. And now let us look at uh, the reactance of an inductor. The reactance of an inductor is now as we have seen before for a DC voltage applied across the inductor we said the inductor eventually becomes a short. So inductor is a short there is no voltage dropped across for DC voltage V. So but then when you closed a switch when you had a switch and closed it you suddenly introduce the voltage and then with a so with a certain frequency and then you will have a reactance for the inductor. The reactance for the inductor XL is J omega L which is also J 2 pi F L can also be written as S L the inductor. So what it means is as you increase the, if you have an AC source here, for example, VFT, as the frequency increases, the inductor presents a, a significant resistance or reactance at higher frequencies. So when F is 0, when F frequency F is 0, which means the DC actually XL is 0. So XL will increase with increasing frequency of the, the source. So that is the reactance of an inductor. And then we also looked at how the current flows through an inductor. We will look at it in a different video where how uh, on a unit step response of a RL circuit but initially what we said is initially when you when you apply a certain voltage or push try to push a current it will resist the current initially and it would drop a lot of voltage and then the voltage will die down and you will it will eventually let the current and that is the way of actually charging the or storing it's storing energy in terms of a magnetic field around it so this is the video about inductor